here's the big question. You're interested in value investing and valuing and evaluating businesses on a deep level, but you don't know how, even after researching for hours, probably dozens of hours, hundreds of hours on the internet, and because nobody else shows you how to do it. This podcast has all those answers and much more about value investing and finance. My name is Jason Rivera. Welcome to Value Investing in Your Car. Hey, Jason here. In this episode of Value Investing in Your Car, we're going to talk about the powerful mental model, uh, margin of safety. As deep value investors, you hear this term all the time, margin of safety, undervaluation, margin of safety, undervaluation, margin of safety, undervaluation. You hear it pretty much constantly. It's pretty much the number one rule when it comes to value investing. Um, but you can apply it to you can apply it to pretty much any aspect of your life. For example, um, and my wife makes fun of me all the time for the amount of kind of margin of safety that I build into time. I'm always early to everything. If I'm not, it drives me literally nuts. Um, uh, money in our bank accounts and my business accounts. Um, <clears throat> Um, what else? Gas in cars, um, pretty much everything. I use some kind of margin of safety in. Uh, so, today, I thought I had enough margin of safety. When I last drove my car, it had said it had 30, 40, 30 to 40 miles left in the gas tank. It's like, okay, I'll be able to get drop my daughters off at school on Monday and be able to go get gas no problem well i get in the car this morning it somehow is dropped from 35 to 40 to 30 and then the car okay let me back up <laughs> i was fine until i got on one of the busiest thoroughfares in the area um it's called 301 in big ben very busy especially during rush hour traffic which it was uh, I was literally stopped at the gas station or at the light to turn left to get the gas station. I was probably 400 feet, 500 feet from the gas station, something like that. And all of a sudden, my car just shuts off as I as the light turns green and I hit uh, my accelerator and my car to go to the gas station. I'm like, oh shit. Uh, so I tried to turn it on. It wouldn't turn on. And I kept seeing it. it said 10 miles were left. Um, and I... I it, there's not 30, even 30 miles. Um, it's I don't, I don't live 30 miles from my daughter's school, uh, both there and back. Um, I live maybe 15 minutes, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on traffic, uh, from my daughter's school. <clears throat> so I don't even live close to 30 miles. So I let the margin of safety get too close. As I hit the accelerator, my car stopped said while still saying there's 10 miles in the car left um and i thought because as soon as i hit the accelerator and i felt it shutting off because i felt cars shut off before um like that that the battery symbol came up on the on the dash of the car and it felt like i lost all electrical power because again i felt that before in the car my truck when i had my uh my first truck uh all the electrical just kind of died and I lost power steering and everything as I was driving the truck. It was really, really scary. Um, but comes to turn out after my buddy comes and helps me get gas uh, because I didn't have a gas can and it, again, it was rush hour traffic so I couldn't just kind of run across the street um, to get gas myself. Uh, so luckily, great friend helped me <laughs> get some gas after he dropped his own kids off at school this morning um and it was gas that's all it needed it wasn't the battery it wasn't any kind of major electrical issue it wasn't any kind of major issue i just needed gas again the gas gauge is wrong on my car um should i have let it get that low no i pretty much never do uh but again the last time i drove it it said 35 to 40 and i knew i would have enough uh at that amount or at that rate, I guess, that I would have that uh, more than enough gas to get to my daughter's school, take them both to their different schools, and then um, get gas after that. 
or so I thought because apparently the gas gauge is wrong. So, point of this and my ridiculousness and my frustration this morning um, is the margin of safety mental model uh, is not only it pretty much, again, not ultra powerful, but extremely powerful and pretty much rule number one in value investing. Um, you need a margin of safety. If something is worth X, you need, depending on the person and the situation, a 10 to 50% discount to its intrinsic value to that be your purchase price. Uh, you need a margin of safety in the free cash flow production, uh, free cash flow to sales, operating margins, all this kind of thing. All this kind of stuff I built into my analysis to make sure there's a gigantic, massive margin of safety. I'm one of the most conservative value investors I know um, because I build in such gigantic margins of safety in all of my analysis. Pretty much everything is built on that, eliminating as much risk as possible, making sure I have enough margin of safety, and that's why my results have been pretty spectacular so far. Um, but again, you can apply this mental model in pretty much any aspect of your life. Getting damn gas in the car before it goes to zero, and especially if your gas gauge is wrong, like me, <laughs> like my apparently my car is. Um, never run out of gas before. I'm 30, 31. And I started driving when I was 15. You can start driving in South Dakota when you're 14, and that's where I was when I started driving. Um, but I didn't start driving until I was 15. So I've been driving for 16 years, never once ran out of gas. Um, <laughs> because again, I use the topic of margin of safety in pretty much every aspect of my life, even before uh, I knew what margin of safety the term meant. Uh, I've always been, I usually always get gas around the quarter tank just again, so I don't have this problem. So I'm a huge believer in this topic of margin of safety that I've been practicing for, again, pretty much my entire life. And especially since I became, um, in the last 12 years or so, since I've been, uh, become a deep value investor, uh, I've tried to implement margin of safety again into pretty much every aspect of my life, getting places on time, checking for wrecks if it's a if it's a decent commute. Um, so again, I may leave myself enough time so I'm early um, because again, driving arriving late to anything makes me, literally drives me insane. Um, getting gas in your car. Um, uh, pretty much, again, pretty much anything. Having enough money in your accounts for personal uh, events, for um, business events, um, all this kind of stuff. You can use margin of safety concept in pretty much every aspect of your life, and I believe that it'll it not ne won't necessarily make your life better, but it'll definitely make your life a lot more stressless. Um, it will get rid of a lot of stress in your life uh, because you won't always be rushing around. For example, if you're late, I know people who are always late, and just seeing them be late gives me anxiety and drives me nuts, even if I'm not doing anything with them. Um, but this mental model um, is, again, an extremely powerful one that will, again, I'm not going to say it's going to give you a better life, um, but it will definitely take a lot of stress out of your life, which, and again, is a victory on its, own, uh, on its own because then you don't have to spend mental energy, massive amount of mental energy trying to figure stuff out. If stuff goes wrong, like, again, this morning I was... Tr I probably wasted at least an hour of time this morning. Uh, plus, I gave myself a massive headache trying to figure everything out because I was stressed out, because I was getting anxiety, because I was late starting my day and getting um, getting stuff done with my businesses and my teams and trying to sell a house and uh, trying to buy another house and kids stuff and all just typical life stuff. So um, it'll definitely take a lot of stress out of your life if you practice the mental model of uh, margin of safety in, again, pretty much every aspect of your life. Um, I can't think of an area where margin of safety wouldn't come in. I mean, if you're skydiving, there's a reason they have you, I've never sky uh, uh, gone skydiving yet, but I probably will at some point, and there's a reason they have, uh, perfect example actually, there's a reason they have, if you've never uh, gone skydiving before, they have you with somebody, I think it's called tandem skydiving. Um, 
they have two uh, two shoots on them, parachutes on them in case one breaks, and then you have parachutes on yourself in case those break, um, in case theirs break. So massive margins of safety. Same thing with bridges. Um, Charlie Munger has brought up this example before of the margin of safety concept from engineering uh, when it comes to bridges. They make sure they have a recommended, if you ever go over a bridge when you're driving, uh, they have a recommended weight, um, but they still build it to to where if something does happen, the bridge can hold more weight than that if it's built um, properly. Uh, just in case something happens, again, margin of safety, you don't want, and a lot of this kind of margin of safety stuff comes in with extreme events where you could literally lose a ton of money, like investing, um, um, skydiving, you could lose your life. Uh, if a bridge collapses, that could cause massive chaos, loss of time, resources, loss of life, all that kind of stuff. So, um, massive, important concept um, that was reinforced to me today, uh, again. So, <laughs> um, I hope this video has helped uh, you think about the concept and mental model of margin of safety. Um, huge believer in the uh, concept of worldly wisdom and mental models from Charlie Munger. Um, huge believer in that, and I love talking about this kind of stuff. Um, don't necessarily like having it reinforced to me like this, um, but it always helps. So, um, oh, it always helps to learn more and have stuff reinforced. So, um, make sure to check our other videos in this series. Um, this series is also a podcast now. Um, Value Investing Your Car is also a podcast available on all major Apple, Android, uh, PC, podcasting platforms, SoundCloud, iTunes. Um, Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify um, should be available pretty much everywhere podcasts go, the podcasting app I use on Android, on my Android phone um, should be available pretty much everywhere um, if you like listening to podcasts, make sure to check those episodes, uh, these episodes out on the podcast, you can listen to it anywhere you want now, uh, for free uh, make sure to check out our other series our My Thought series, uh, our case study series, our free training Friday series, our throwback Thursday series. We have a lot of series where we teach uh, different kinds of concepts and techniques and skills, um, all ultra valuable um, that you can use to become a better value investor, thinker, person, all this kind of stuff. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified at any time we release a new video um, and releasing new videos pretty much at three to four times a week at this point. Um, and we're up around or over 400 videos at this point if memory serves me right um so we got a ton of great content and i really appreciate subscribe hit the bell so you're notified anytime we release a video and if you have a comment comment below and I'm, uh, i answer all the comments personally um thanks for listening have a great day and hopefully you don't have run out of gas or have car issues and have the uh the uh concept of margin of safety drilled into your head like I did this morning and reinforced and drilled into your head like I did this morning. So, um, thanks. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, uh, hope you learned from my, uh, <laughs> massive frustration this morning. Um, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.